All right, chapter nine, lesson two is area of triangles. We want to draw the parallelogram below, and then we want to uh, find out, um, answer the question, what is the formula for the area of a parallelogram? Okay, so we already learned the formula for the area of a, a parallelogram yesterday, and that would be area is equal to base times height. Base times height. Very good. So area is equal to base times height. Now, part two, number two, says draw a line segment to um, connect point A with point C. So here, I just did this, okay? And then we want to know what do we notice about the area of the two triangles that are created. So here are the two triangles that were created. I'm going to pull them out here. So here, if I... Um, Rotate this around, you can see they're exactly the same. Is everybody with me? So, there are two triangles with equal areas. Okay, so they are exactly the same. Now, what can we say about the area of one of these triangles compared to the full parallelogram? Very good, very good. The area of one of the triangles is half of the area of the parallelogram. And the way we would write that in formula form is area is equal to one half times the base times the height. Another way that you can write it is area is equal to very good. Base times height divided by 2. So, the area of a triangle, as we just discovered, is um, the formula here is area is equal to 1 half base times height, or the area is equal to base times height divided by 2. We know that um, if we have two triangles with the same area, we put them together, that will give us a parallelogram. Okay? Now, Please make sure you write down this vocabulary. Congruent. Congruent figures. Congruent figures are figures that have the same shape and the same size, just like the two triangles that we had in the warm-up. Please make sure you write down that definition. Okay. Since congruent triangles have the same area, the area of a triangle is one-half the area of a parallelogram. You don't have to write that blue part, that blue underline, because we already wrote that down. <clears throat> All right, so the base of a triangle can be any one of its sides, any of its sides. The height is the perpendicular distance from that base to the opposite vertex. Do you guys know what a vertex is? Yes. The vertex is one of the points. Each one of those is a vertex, right? So if you take a vertex and you drop that, that plumb bob, you remember I showed you the, that plumb bob? You drop that plumb bob and you get a right angle, it's going to be to the opposite side. Does everybody see that? So you could also see that if we dropped a parallel this way, that could be a height, right? Or if we dropped a parallel this way, I don't know if I can be, do it very straight. If we did one this way, <laughs> then that would be the height. Is everybody clear? So in the first example, it says find the area of a triangle. And again, just like with the parallelogram, you're going to count the complete sides. Okay, so here, um, the first thing we're going to do when we do our um, area of a triangle is we're going to write our formula, just the same as with the parallelogram. So when we count the height, we've got one, and then, whoopsie, one, we've got one, two, three, four. Okay, so the height is four, and the base, we're going to count the full sides, right? So there's one, 
two, three, four, five, six. Is everybody clear with that? Okay. So then, once we count our sides, then we will substitute and then simplify to get our final answer. So, one half, if you look at this, one half, remember multiplying times one half is the same thing as dividing by two. So, one half times six is three, right? And then three times four is 12. Very good. Um, so, I like to, I like to multiply the one half times any, if there's an even number there, I like to multiply it times the one half, just so I have smaller numbers, okay? All right, so um, example two, again, finding the area of the triangle. Once again, write your formula, what area is equal to one half base times height. Then here they give you the dimensions, okay? So we have one half times the base, which is 12.1, times the height, which is 6.4. So, in this case, I would probably multiply one-half times a 6.4. Does everybody see that? So, I'd get 3.2, and then I could just multiply the 3.2 times a 12.1. And then we simplify to get 38.72, and don't forget to write your units, square meters. All right, so let's do this one together. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to write our formula. So, let's do this one with this formula. Area is equal to one-half base times height. Okay? So, we're going to count our pieces, count our sides. So, the area is equal to the base, which is one, two, three, four, five, six. Right? So now we substitute that, that in. So area is equal to the base, which is 6, times the height, which is 1, 2, 3. So the height is 3. And then we're going to divide by 2. So this one is simple <coughs> enough that we can just do 6 times 3 is... 18, and then 18 divided by 2 is 9, okay? So here, we've got 18 divided by 2, which is equal to 9. And then because we don't have any units there, we're going to write, right, units squared. Now I'm going to show you one more thing. Here, if I wanted to, I could simplify the 2 and the 6. Okay, so 2 divided by 2 is 1, 6 divided by 3, I mean 6 by, divided by 2 is 3, and then you see 3 times 3 over 1 gives me 9. Okay, so you can do it either way. All right, for this next one, let's use this formula, 1 half base times height. Okay, now we substitute in. So we write the formula, then we substitute. So area is equal to one half times the base, which is what? Nine times the height, which is seven. Remember, remember, the height is the one that drops down to the right angle, okay? So here we have, we, we can't simplify any of this by multiplying times the, the two. But, um, so we know that 9 times 7 is 63, so that's going to be 1 half times 63. And remember, <coughs> multiplying times 1 half is the same thing as dividing by 3. So here we can actually do some simplifying, right? So 2 divided by 2 is 1. And 2 into 63 is going to go, well, actually, no, we can't do that. Let's just, just, just do the division. So... 2 goes into 6, how many times? 3 times. And then 2 goes into 3, how many times? 1 time. With how many left over? 1 half. And then my units will be feet squared. 
So now we're going to find missing dimensions. And we're going to do this the same way we did with the parallelograms. We're going to write our formula. We're going to substitute what we know. And then we're going to solve for the unknown. Okay? Now, here we want to find the, the missing dimension of the triangle. Once again, we're going to write the formula. We're going to substitute in what we know. And then we'll solve for the unknown. So here, what they gave us is the area. They gave us the area. They gave us the height, right? And we're solving for the base. All right, so we're going to substitute in. So the area is 24, so that goes in for A. The base is what we're solving for, so then we just put B there. 6 is the height, so that goes in for H, and then we divide by 2. Is everybody clear? So now, remember, this says B times 6 divided by 2. Because that is um, a division, the inverse is multiplication. So in order to get this blue blob by itself, we're going to multiply times 2. Very good. So we multiply times 2 on both sides. We end up with 48 is equal to b times 6. And now this is a multiplication equation. And then we're going to divide by 6. So we divide by 6 on both sides, and the base is equal to 8 centimeters. Now remember, because we're solving for a length of a side, not the area, it's just the units. You got it? All right, let's do this. Let's do these together. So let's do these two together. Okay, and we're going to solve for the, the missing <coughs> dimension. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write our formula. Area is equal to one-half base times height. One-half base times height. Okay? Now we're going to substitute in what we know. So let's see. They gave us the area. So that's going to be 40 over here. And that's going to be equal to one half times the base is what we're solving for. That's still our unknown. So that's times B times the height. Remember, the height is the one that drops to the right angle. So that's going to be 8. And now we simplify to get our final answer. So we can do 1 half times 8, which is what? Four, right? So we've got 40 is equal to 4B. Does everybody see what we just did? We multiplied the 1 half eight. times the 8, and that's where we got our 4. Okay? So now, to get the B by itself, we will divide by 4. Very good. So those 4s will cancel. And B is equal to 10. 10 what? 10 meters. Very good. 10 meters. And that's what B is equal to. Got it? Yeah. All right. Let's do the next one. So once again, when we're solving for the unknown, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write our formula. So once we write our formula, now we're going to substitute in what we know. So, again, they gave us the area, which is 72, right? So, 72 goes right here, and that's equal to 1 half times the base, which is what? 12, and then the height is what we're solving for. <coughs> so, now we can simplify to get our answer. Now we can look at this 1 half and the 12. So 1 half times 12 is equal to 6. So we have 72 is equal to 6 times h. And again, how do I get the h by itself? Divide by 6. Very good. And here, the 6 is cancel. And h is equal to? Twelve what? Yards. Very good. Twelve yards. <coughs> Make sure you write your, your units, okay? If you don't write your units, you're going to get 
half off. So for the last example, it says the front of a camping tent has the dimensions shown. How much material will be used to make the front of the tent? So this is a real life situation where we're going to find area. Okay, so the shape is a triangle and we have area is equal to one half times the base times the height. So once we write our formula, now we're going to substitute in what we know. So um, the base down here is 5, and the height that drops down to the right angle is 3. So we substitute those in. So now we have 1 half times 5 times 3, and we can't simplify the 1 half with any of those, so we're just going to multiply. So we, we have um, 1 half times 15, and then that simplifies to 7 and a half square feet. And because it is area that we're solving for, we definitely need to use the square units. Is everybody clear? Yeah.